Hello, good morning, or good afternoon, or good whatever it is. <clears throat> I'm just getting set up here. I'm moving kind of slowly today. Everything's been posted. <clears throat> I made an exciting run into Augsburg last night. I got a couple of cool things. I got some H and 2H pencil leads for my mechanical pencils because I love doing sketching and stuff with those. So that was a big triumph. I got that at Rick's. We were in Augsburg. Rick's is this pretty cool independent little art store that's primarily focused on the student market for the art school and the architecture school in Augsburg and all of that. But yeah, it's a cool place. I like, I like Rick's. It's a good place to hang out. Then I got this. This, this is something I used before. And we're going to start using it today. <clears throat> This is a roll of sketching paper that's about 50 meters long. So I'm going to put this out here. I'm going to save this because I can use that. Okay, so you can see I can actually trace through this. That's really not why it's so cool. The cool thing is I'm going to use this Like, um, how do I describe it? When I was in architecture school a million years ago, we all had a roll like this. Some of them were white, some of them were brown. It didn't really matter. It wasn't really great paper. It was just whatever happened to be here. And the idea was that you can use this as sort of a, a thinking pad or or, or a, a kind of a sketchbook or a record and you use it like a scroll you you draw on it and then you move it and you draw on it some more and you roll up one side and unroll the other side and then over the course of a semester one of the things that you had to do was to turn in your role as part of your graded work and the way this worked was Anyways, everything started, basically started, the, the, the thinking started on, on a roll. And it was like, a lot of it was just like doodling. What, what, like, where is this going to go, man? I don't know where it's going to go. Let's, let's find out and see what happens. I'm kind of disappointed that this is so see-through. But that's not really a big deal. Um, that may become a big advantage later on. There's a real simple solution for that. Really, really simple solution. Just grab a piece of paper from one of the many blocks of paper here. Blocks of paper. Actually, I have every every tool I could possibly need at this point for creating art. Brushes need to be replaced every once in a while. Paint from the stocked up occasionally. So what I can do is, see, I can take one of these. It's a nice, reasonably nice drawing paper. Put it underneath here. Ta-da! That looks all normal. And I can go back to sketching. And the idea is, yeah, you use this a little bit like a diary of ideas. And and one of the things that we used to do. When I was in architecture school, we'd start off every day at the desk with 15 or 20 minutes of just doing stuff like this and then seeing where it goes. And then maybe that would lead somewhere. It's sort of to get the creative juices flowing. And it's not supposed to be something that's a finished product by any means. It's just 
it's like sitting down with a sketchbook and just sketch even more informal than that and it, it gives you a cool record of, of, of what's going on see i may have already found something cool here this idea right here this could become some kind of a plan I'm not sure yet, but see now that's kind of interesting. That might turn into something. <coughs> yeah, we had when I was in architecture school a million years ago. The way it worked was we had a huge open laboratory real high ceiling cowgo hall in at virginia tech cogo hall <clears throat> and basically there was hundreds of desks and they weren't really desks they were doors on uh saw horses and each person got a door when you started out there school gave you that and then you outfitted it and it had like a, a bar like this one of these drawing bars that was the first thing that pretty much everybody bought was a drawing bar and then you bought all the equipment that you needed like rapidographs and and pens and pencils and stuff to build stuff and stuff to make stuff and whatever but that was where you worked and so there were like the basement floor was usually the first year students the, the first floor was the second year students. The uh, third and fourth floors were, were th year three, four, and five. Five didn't have studio time the same way that others did. It had studio time, but it wasn't quite as, <clears throat> it wasn't quite the same as the first four years. And basically you had three days a week, Monday through Friday. It was Monday, Wednesday, and Friday usually in the first and second year that you had studio time from usually eight o'clock in the morning till noon or from one o'clock till five o'clock and so there was 12 hours of studio time a week that you were supposed to be in the studio producing something this was in addition to your other classes and so yeah during those times you were basically expected to be at your desk it was like a job you were expected to be there creating something or or figuring out what to create or whatever you were supposed to be there and not only were you supposed to be there during those times this desk was your desk it belonged to you and it was your equipment and it's a lot like what i got set up here um let this out of here for a minute That'd be a cool idea so like over here you can see i got my brushes and stuff isn't really set up really well to do this but okay we'll do it so like i got my brushes over here on one side of this desk that i bought i got the computer set up in here you can see the rest of my studio back here that's like a shelf place to store all kinds of stuff i got all kinds of supplies and watercolor paper and stuff in there yes there's there's a battle sword over there in case we're attacked by by hooligans or something we're ready to go everybody should have a battle sword in their studio that's important um, you can see there's an easel over there. I got this kind of hooked up in a weird way that makes it so I can't really move it around as much as I would like. I got this thing strung. But yeah, there's an easel with my, my oil painting stuff over there, and then there's that. And then over on this side of the room, the other side of the room, there's a, a little place that I've set up here to hold more stuff, which is very wobbly. Um, this is actually a drying rack for clothes, but since I don't dry my clothes here, I dry them downstairs. I use that as my, my additional desk and then more stuff. And I got the wooden blocks that I'm carving and stuff. It's all hidden down here. So yeah, this is kind of like command central for doing this. Let me get this camera back, right? Okay. Yeah. We want it. Ta-da. And we're back. And so yeah, this is this is actually somewhat modeled after my my desk in architecture school many years ago. The concept here. 
it was a good time. So it was back in the early 1980s. Then I joined the Army for four years. And then after that, came back and worked one more year in architecture school. And then I dropped out to run a rock band. And I do have some regrets about that, man. I wasn't, you really need a lot of self-discipline to get through a school like that. And it's time I was just too busy doing other stuff like playing in bands and partying <coughs> and working. Anyways, it was, yeah, it was, it was an interesting time. But yeah, we had this thing. Let me see, see here. See, I can do something like this. This might become a cool plant. Yeah, it was interesting. Architecture school was actually, in some ways, one of my favorite times in my life. It was really cool. The first year, the first two years were pretty good. But then I just sort of got distracted. I didn't really have my act together. And this might become something here. I might be able to make something out of this. That's an interesting pattern. Let's see. That might actually work better. It's interesting. That light isn't flickering today. I wonder what the difference is. Oh no, that's weird. So yeah, you make notes on here, do whatever you want. No. We're trying to get something going creatively here. Many, many, many hours in Kogo Hall. Many late nights there. It was kind of cool, too, because you could go in there 24 hours a day. It was open. And so, actually, a lot of times at night, that's where we, we'd go down there and we'd work, like, from after dinner from, like, 5.30 or 6 o'clock till 10 o'clock or 11 then there'd be a band playing downtown somewhere. We'd all go out and see the band afterwards. Yeah, it was nice, man. It was a great, great experience. I highly recommend it. If you can get into that school, it's a great place to be. It's really hard to get into. They have a huge number of applicants and only a limited number of positions. And it's, it's one of the best art, architecture, and design schools anywhere on the planet. This might be interesting, too. We might be able to do something with that. So, yeah, this is just a little bit of warm-up. I don't know where it's going. But some of these designs will probably show up later. These ideas, really, they're not really designs yet. I'll probably show up later in some surrealistic paintings somewhere. <clears throat> there was also a, there was an annex or an extension on the other side of campus. <clears throat> where they had the same thing. They had lots of desks set up and you could go down there and do whatever you want. And it was fun, man. It was an interesting, interesting time. Interesting bunch of personalities. Architects have really interesting personalities compared to what I would call normal people. <clears throat> and yeah, there was a lot of egomania and there was a lot of other crazy stuff going on there.
but some good people. Ray Dunnett's architecture. Ray Dunnett's went to school there. He's in Massachusetts, near where I used to live in Massachusetts. And there were a couple other people. There's a couple of people that I don't talk to very much on my Facebook feed, but they, they were all there in the architecture days. <clears throat> Yeah, it was actually better than the Art School of Virginia Tech because the Art School of Virginia Tech it did have space, it did have it did have studios and stuff, but it wasn't the same thing where you could just leave your equipment all there. And that was the nice thing about Kogel Hall was you could just leave all your equipment there all the time, and it was ready to go. A lot of people like would keep a lockbox and they, if they were going away for Christmas or summer break or something, they'd lock everything up. And there was other issues like that, but then there were occasional thefts of valuable equipment and other things. But yeah, it was it was a good time. I, I enjoyed it. It was a good learning time. Yeah, I don't know. This is the this is the best thing to come out of it. Hmm. Well, let's see, that's 15 minutes of warming up. So, let's do like we always did, put this away. We'll come back to this later, I'm sure. Take it like that. Start. Remember, some guys had rules, like, I'm going to produce two meters of work in my scroll a week. Or I'm going to produce three meters or five meters. And it was cool. I think a lot of good ideas came from that. All right, now let's see where we're at here. We've got painting to do. And a lot of painting to work on. This was coming along pretty nicely. We need to do something here. We need, I don't know, do we need to put in these other numbers? I don't know. Yeah, maybe we do. I probably should have made the numbers all crazy, but for this first one, I'll do it normal. And we need a time. Well, let's see. We could use 515. That's an idea. We could use 420. That might be suspicious. We could use 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. <clears throat> We could just make it a weird time. Let's just make it a weird time. One forty five. That'll be our time. So, let's see, hold on.
But yeah, my vacation is coming up next week. I'll be here during vacation. I'm going to try to broadcast at least every other day. I'll be here live for two and a half weeks. Minus, I don't know, I might go to Prague. I have friends I'd like to visit there. But I also might not. Because I'm really not sure what's going to happen travel-wise. I don't want to have problems coming back to Germany and be told that I have to quarantine for a week or something. If, if the, the outbreak there is, is definitely stronger than it is here right now. There's no question about that. So I might go there, and I might not. It's possible. Let's take a look at what's in the German news today. What is going on here? Um, let's see. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. What's what's the exciting news here today? Booster empfangen mit BioNTech und Moderna. Drone in Nebenwirken. Das entfällt die Stiko. Are there problems with getting the vaccine? Are there after effects, side effects? Probably. They want you to buy some cool clothing here, some of which looks rather nice. Unfassbar. Hamburg unterläuft wohl gravierender Fehler bei Corona Inzidenz von Ungeimpfen. Die Hamburger Behörden versuchen seit Langem die Corona Zahlen für Geimpfte und Ungeimpfte separat auszuweisen. The bypasser often bear ein schwieriger feller. They made some kind of mistake in their statistics regarding the difference between vaccinated and unvaccinated people. In Germany, that's a serious crime. Germans expect statistics here to be done right. I had an interesting discussion one time when I was working at the German Federal Reserve as an English teacher. And some of the employees there were telling me that, unlike the United States, the numbers here really have to be accurate. And they can't do things to gussy up those numbers or change them. Because the payments from our social security system for pensioners and, and poor people and all the people that have problems here in society and unemployed and stuff, all of that's computed from our economic numbers to decide how much somebody really needs to live on. And if they don't have enough money to live on, they expect that it'll be like 1920s again and there'll be riots in the streets and all kinds of terrible things will happen. So they don't improvise the statistics here the same way that they tend to play around with them in England and the United States. It's a little different. If you want to know, like, the real inflation rate based on the calculations the United States made back in the 70s and the, re the, the real things like M1 and M2 amounts, there's a place called Shadow Stats that computes all of the original numbers the way that they were computed many years ago. And it's revealing. Like, the general inflation rate in America is somewhere between... 5 and 10 percent pretty much for the last 20 years, but because of the way they can have manipulated the statistics, it only shows 2 or 3 percent. They have some very funny things in the calculations, like somehow a washing machine that has a microprocessor built in, it's inherently worth more than one that doesn't. And so even though if you just figured the price of washing machines and how they're going up is maybe 10 percent per year, 
the thinking is, well, these washing machines are a lot better than the last washing machines, so really the inflation rate is lower, blah, blah, blah. They don't do stuff like that here. That's, that's not in the cards. They can't do that here. It's just not acceptable. So, yeah, let's see. Deutsche Ski Urlaube Betroffen, Österreich, Verschärft, Einreise, Reglen, Wegen, Omicron. It's getting harder to go to Austria, which is where a lot of Germans like to go to go skiing because of the Omicron variant. Austria's got serious COVID issues right now. Ungeimpfte Stadtraten lost in Oltinger Rat heftige Diskussion aus. Sind kein ex beliebiger Hassenzugverein. Unvaccinated member of the city committee or like the city parliament or, or the, you know, the board of directors of the city started a heavy discussion, hefty discussion in Olchinger. I don't know where Olchinger is. We are not some kind of rabbit testing society so she thinks that using these vaccines is like being rabbits in an experimental facility okay i mean to me the numbers are really clear you've got a two percent chance of dying from omicron if you just don't get vaccinated And if you are vaccinated, it's about 15 times less than that. And the chances of you dying from the vaccine are about 1 in 500,000 or 1 in a million. So, if you're smart, you get vaxxed. If you're weird, you know. And yeah, I think you're weird. But I think you're basically insane. But there's been a lot of propaganda for quite some time about vaccines and there's been a lot of misinformation spread and yeah yeah i had a girlfriend who believed all that stuff once she's not my girlfriend anymore I don't know, I couldn't figure it out, man. This idea that science is some kind of conspiracy to lie to the general public, I just, I don't follow that. It's like you really don't understand science, and as far as the government any government committing some kind of a conspiracy to keep millions of people in the dark about stuff like this. Nah, it's just not going to happen. There's other things the government's actually pretty good at hiding from me, but this is one of them. Whatever. <clears throat> Some weird stuff going on out there. That's all I can say. Anything else here? The Hyatta Fronten Switching Itaka und Browse Gigant. Rishwinden Cola und Energy Drinks. There's some kind of confrontation between the Itaka stores and somebody who blew, brews Coca Cola and other energy drinks, which, by the way, are also not all completely legal here. Some of them are. Some of the some of the some of the energy drinks you can get. Some of them you cannot get. Boop, 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 boop. Some of them have been banned from Germany because they've got too many chemicals in them.
There are definitely energy drinks here, but there's a lot of energy drinks here that are specific to the German market and that really aren't common, shall we say, in other markets. Oh no, I don't drink energy drinks. My understanding is they're not really very healthy for you. So why would you do that? Basically just a huge chemical rush of caffeine. I do drink coffee and green tea, but I don't need to massively dope up on caffeine and other stuff. It's just not my thing. Um, anything else here? Omicron in Deutschland. Da kommt kein Welle, Welle sondern eine Wand. Auch Drosten sieht sonder Problem. Okay, so Drosten is the health minister, one of the guys involved in the health minister here. Or he runs the Koch Institute, Robert Koch Institute. They're expecting a wall of coronavirus here. Now, yeah, this, is, this is one of the reasons why I'm hesitant about possibly going Prague. I don't want to be the guy that gets it, and I don't want to be the guy that gets it, has no symptoms, brings it back, and makes a bunch of people sick. And the corona rates in Czechia are double what they are here. Our infection rate is about, I think it was 321 per 100,000 over seven days. This morning, it's at least 700 over there. Omicron Tsunami, bald, auch in Deutschland? Krankenhäuser vor in Notfall, sehr frühzeitig beschränken. So the hospitals are saying there's going to be a huge crisis here. And we should get our shit together and probably not, not be, and we probably won't. I'm expecting that we're probably going to have an enormous wave of COVID virus, probably in the middle of January. When I went to uh, Augsburg last night, you can't even go in a store up there now without showing your paperwork. They got guards pretty much at all the, all the, all the department stores. Anything that's got, got, got a large number of people coming in has a guard to check your paperwork. And even in the smaller places, somebody's checking it. It's just not, you just can't go anywhere anymore without being checked. That's, that's become the rule here. And there are some people that are really mad about it. And that's just too bad. You can't ride the train without paperwork. They can stop you on the train here. Our numbers are a little better. We got 70% of the population is double vaxxed. Of 75% of the adults, I think, are vaxxed one time. But yeah, there's holdouts. And yeah, the holdouts are having problems. And they will continue to have problems.
I honestly do think that you're nuts if you don't get vaccinated. You're just crazy. I don't understand why you would not do that. That's just asking for a massive amount of trouble. In more ways than, than just, it's not just, it's not just getting sick. You can't legally ride a train here without being vaxxed. You can't go to work. You're not supposed to be in any working establishment if you're not vaxxed. The ordinance on come around to businesses and they can demand to see everybody's paperwork. And if you're letting your employees work there and you're not vaxxed, you're in trouble. No, I made a mistake here. I didn't leave any room for my signature block. It's a huge thing that I do. And we'll just stop painting that area. <coughs> and this one's almost done. I'm getting there. Still got a ways to go. Anything else here? Informed by full moon, Mysteriosa Tyrian Corsiren, das sagen die Experten, dass der Mundzyklus bei der Verträglichkeit von Impfungen eine Rolle spielt, so ist keine neue Idee. Nun klären Experten auf, ist der Mund wirklich schuld? So there's a rumor going around that somehow... God, I don't even know if I... This is just too weird. The moon is somehow influencing how the vaccines work. And it makes a difference if you get it under the light of the full moon or not. And I don't even have a comment for that. That's just beyond weird. My only comment is, what, are people really this superstitious in this era? I mean, it's weird, man. This is this is like out of the dark ages. This is giving me great anxiety that 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 the human race really we have a lot of technology that we did not have previously. But I don't think we have very much smarts as as a society, and that that worries me. Given the state of things. I don't know. It, it's weird. It's really weird. Sauberhafte Seiten. Vorwerk, Staubsauger und Sorgwischer. Saugen und Wischen wird mit Staubsaugern und Sorgwischern von Vorwerk zum Kinderspiel. Nur jetzt, die Haushaltshelfer zum Sonderpreis mit einem Akkusager gratis. Clean times. You can get your vacuum cleaner, and they have these things here for cleaning floors that are made out of wood that I don't really know what you'd call in English. It's kind of sort of like a wet mop. And apparently now they have microchips built into them that's supposed to assist your cleaning. So, yeah. Great. I'm going to paint till about 2 o'clock. Then I'm going to go to the store and get the food that I need. And then I'm going to come back. And then we'll do another Twitch round. Yeah.
Yeah, I just, I don't know, man. People are weird. Like Jim Morrison said, people are strange. Well, they are. The full moon is affecting my vaccination. What are you, a werewolf? Vampire? I mean, really, what, what is your deal? What, what is going on with you, man? Not by Treden Einer Verbot Zona. Strike mit Forster Escalier. Muncher Wanderer Müssen Zahlen. Weil ein Münchner E. Heper das Betriebsverbot in einem Wildfutterungsgebiet missachtete, traf man sich nun vor Gericht. Beide hatten Einspruch gegen der Bussengeld. Bescheid eingelegt. So something happened. They went into a natural wildlife preserve that humans are not supposed to be in. They got caught by somebody in the forestry service here. And they had to pay a huge fine. And now they're fighting it in court. We've had a forestry service here for 300 years. The long term forestry service. No, there just there isn't much else here. The news here is, is just lame today. There isn't anything exciting going on. Let's go look at anything happening on CNN we need to know about. Boris Johnson is fighting for his political life after a stunning election defeat. Well, great. Guy's an idiot. Pfizer vaccine fails to produce expected immunity in young kids. That's kind of a bummer. Trump valued re-election over American lives. Uh, yeah. Not a surprise. Russia lists demands while amassing more troops near the Ukraine. Trump ally Roger Stone pleads the fifth. British Chancellor government is not closing down businesses. I'm certainly not making it any easier for them. Marine Corps discharges 103 service members for refusing COVID vaccine. I don't know if anybody's considered this. If you refuse to get vaccinated and you get out of the service, this is like the easiest way to get out of an army or military contract that there is. Oh, sorry, I refuse to get vaccinated. Sorry, you're discharged. Yay! Uh-huh. It's weird. I'm telling you, it's weird. There is a lot of this weirdness going around. That is without question. Is there going to be a war between Russia and the Ukraine? I hope not. That would be not fun. 
That would be very bad for everybody involved, in my opinion. But I don't know, maybe Putin is crazy enough to do it. I really can't tell you. I don't see why he would want to do it, really. I'm sorry, but I really do not think that NATO and the Western countries pose any kind of serious military threat to the Soviet Union or Russia. It is not... I would say, generally speaking, it is not in the history of these countries to launch preemptive wars, but of course America did that with what happened in Afghanistan. So, okay, maybe, maybe there's some reason for some concern. But the thing is, you'd have to have a route to, to launch an invasion of Russia, you'd have to have at least 10 million soldiers. And NATO doesn't have 10 million soldiers, and they're certainly not on the border of Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, Poland, and the Ukraine. That's just crazy talk. That's, that's just, no, sorry. Okay. And if it were to happen, then, you know, if I suddenly saw a huge military buildup, I would criticize that because I don't think it's a great idea. So, no, I, I don't really believe that Russia is facing a serious problem. This strikes me more as some kind of posturing. Um, Russia has serious economic problems. And sadly, it appears that, that Putin has decided it would be better to cause trouble in the world, provoke, try to provoke a war, than it would be to simply deal with those economic problems. And that, I think, is a terrible mistake for Russia to just go ahead and deal with its problems. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm willing to bet every dollar and every euro and every crown from Czechia that I have that there are people in government in Russia that would deeply oppose this idea, and they will not be in favor of it. And so I'll just say that, and we'll see where it goes. I don't even know why they would want the Ukraine back. It's true that Ukraine does have some, some good companies and stuff, but it's extremely corrupt. It's one of the most corrupt countries on the face of the earth. You can look up the corruption index on that place. And somebody would have to deal with that in order to make it more a more productive country i don't see that happening i just i don't get it man it doesn't it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. why why you would go to war over that is it's beyond me it, it's just not but there are a lot of things that aren't logical in the world There is a war. It'll come. It'll come in the springtime. Same thing with a possible invasion of Taiwan by China. If something like that's going to happen, it's going to happen in the springtime. It's not, not going to happen in the winter, I don't think. That, that's just crazy. You don't launch military offensives. You don't launch successful military offensives in the wintertime. Yeah, I just, I can't see that. It's just not logical.
but it also doesn't make a lot of sense because we may have raging Omicron infections by springtime. And it's unlikely that there will be any kind of vaccine that will prevent Omicron by springtime. It takes longer than that to develop a vaccine. And I don't think launching a large military offensive when everybody's getting sick is also a very smart idea. I don't know. A lot of weirdness. A very weird weirdness. Doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't understand why people want to do certain things, certainly. But yeah, I guess it's something of a concern. There could be a war there. And maybe I have had the idea that maybe there is a plot that China and Russia try to launch the wars at the same time because it will overwhelm the ability of the other nations to fight back. And yeah, that might be a good plan. But I also think that it's likely to spiral out of control into something really awful. And I really have to question, what do these people really have to gain by doing this? A big World War II style war, even if it doesn't go nuclear, is going to be extremely costly for everybody involved. I mean, just extremely costly. So my question is, why? The, the economics of it, whatever you get out of it economically, you're go it's going to cost you more than, than to get it than, than, than the return value that you're going to get from taking over those corporations and those places or taking over their economies. <clears throat> and the other thing is, those economies simply aren't going to do as well under an authoritarian style government. People are less likely to buy their products. All of that stuff. I don't know, man. It's the thing with China is scary, but they, they, that guy running that country has some issues. I think, I don't think he really has a really good grasp of economics. Yeah, that needs to dry for a little bit, probably. I need to figure out what to do with the color in here. I want a bold color. This one's going to be super bold. It's going to be a good bold color. How about an orange? See, you talked about the news. Who's that guy, Dan Carlin? This guy who does these history podcasts. 
he thinks there'll be one more big war in human history and then humans will learn it's just a bad idea and nobody can ever do this again. And unfortunately, I think he might be right. I don't think it'll destroy humanity, but I do think it'll set humanity back some. Yeah, I like that. That'll be cool. All right. Well, it's been an hour. I think it's time to go to the store. And then after I go to the store, I'll probably come back on today. It'll probably be about 3.30 or 4 o'clock when I come back on. And we'll work on some of these other things at that point. All right, take care. It's been good having at least one viewer here. So stick around. Um, there is, uh, you can go to my website. There's uh, on YouTube, I have uh, Painting for Fun with Christopher, which is also replays of these tapes and some other things that I've done. So stop by and check those things out. All right, see you later, Gator. Bye.